a warm summer day, the sound of cows munching on grass, an otherwise idyllic setting until, perhaps, you learn what researcher Bryony Sands is looking for as she walks through this pasture. One of the ways that we can just see if we've got dung beetles and what we might have um, is to just come into the pasture and find some dung. Dung beetles will colonise dung within minutes sometimes and we can immediately start to see we have got dung beetles in there. Sands is a postdoc research fellow at UVM's Gund Institute. She's in Vermont to study her passion, dung beetles. I do love talking about them because I think they're really important, but um, yeah, some people think it's really cool and other people are kind of put off by the, the dung side of it. <laughs> so much poop. Dung beetles may have a dirty job, but as the saying goes, somebody's got to do it. Dung beetles are really important um, in agricultural ecosystems. Um, I think they're definitely underappreciated, um, but they provide some really important ecosystem services. Um, and I think when people think about ecosystem services and insects, the, the sort of first, first thing that you'd go to is pollination. Um, but there are other really important ecosystem services, and dung beetles provide the service of decomposition. Dung beetles are found on every continent except Antarctica. It's a type of scarab beetle, and they do come in sort of lots of different shapes and sizes. In warmer climates, such as Africa, as you might have seen on sort of nature documentaries, there are some really big species that sort of roll balls of dung around. In Vermont, there are mainly uh, two groups. So the dung beetles that live in the dung on the surface, and then there's the burying dung beetles, um, which are really important because they make tunnels underneath the dung and drag the dung down into the soil. They're fertilizing the soil. Exactly. Yeah, but all the fresh pasture makes the dung really watery. <laughs> In order to catch and study the beetles, Sands and her team of undergraduate UVM students set traps. We take a small bucket, or these are plant pots, um, and we bury them flush with the, with the soil. Um, and then we collect some fresh cow dung. It has to be fresh because dung beetles are only attracted to fresh dung. We put some chicken wire over the top of the buried bucket and then we form sort of a fake cow pat over that. And then the dung beetles obviously smell the dung and they fly in and burrow down and fall through into the bucket underneath. Um, and then we can collect them and see what species we've got. Beyond beetles, Sand studies the complex connections between plants, animals and insects. This summer we're doing a project um, looking at integrated parasite management um, and that is basically looking at a suite of techniques that can um, control the parasites instead of relying on the chemicals. Um, and part of that is looking at um, farms that are using different strategies, sort of grazing strategies um, to control parasites. And we are looking at um, dung beetle populations on these farms. We're also looking at pest fly populations and the internal parasites of the cows. Um, and just trying to get a picture of which um, sort of parasite management strategies um, can be beneficial for the insects and also um, help to control the parasites. Pests, parasites, and pastures. Sands Research looks to develop a snapshot of on-farm biodiversity. Biodiversity basically refers to um, not just like the abundance of insects that you might find, but the different species that there are. Um, so all of the different species have different ecological roles. Um, for example, in terms of the dung beetles, like I said, some of them just live on the surface, some of them bury the dung. Um, and so it, it's sort of those different ecological functions that are very important when we're thinking about biodiversity. Um, and what we want to see is not just a lot of dung beetles, but um, a good variety of these different species, which are all providing slightly different ecosystem services on the pasture. And have you been seeing those in your research? Yeah, we have. So we've been finding um, lots of different exciting species of dung beetles, um, lots of the, the burying beetles, um, and also the, the ones that live in the dung as well. Um, 
and lots of different predatory beetles as well, which has been fun. Sands research will give Vermont farmers a better perspective on how beneficial insects, like the dung beetle, can prove and improve best management practices and reduce reliance on chemical inputs. There's obviously a lot of cattle in Vermont um, and there's a lot of um, farmers who graze their cattle, which is, um, which is really great. So the, the sort of aim of this project in terms of helping farmers is to find out um, which combinations of management strategies um, are effective in sort of promoting beneficial insects and suppressing pests and parasites on pastures. Um, and it's important sort of now in terms of um, changing climates and changing ecosystems that farmers have sort of a suite of tools that they can use to tackle things like pests and parasites um, instead of just relying on one thing um, which, you know, when the, something goes wrong, um, it's important to have lots of different things that we know can support these healthy ecosystems. Sands has a doctorate in agroecology from the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. Her decision to further her research in Vermont to gain experience and independence in her career was both an academic and practical pursuit. I'd completed a postdoc in the UK um, and then was sort of looking for another position. Um, and yeah, I just saw um, this postdoc um, in regenerative agriculture advertised and um, it looked like a fantastic opportunity. Um, and Vermont seems to be the place to be for sort of agricultural research. So yeah, I took the leap. And I think UVM, um, particularly the Gund Institute where I work, um, is really good in sort of valuing the contribution that postdocs bring. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of research, we're sort of out there in the field, um, and I think I feel very supported in the Gund Institute in this sort of phase where I'm sort of learning to gain my own independence. Bryony Sands research benefits beetles and bugs, and academics and agriculture. And that's no bull. In Alberg, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.